This video by Mark Manson explaining the nuance of life as a game is probably my favorite amongst any one of them that I've seen on YouTube, and there are hundreds. And the reason why is because he doesn't just come up with these gimmicks of life gamification, by instead applying themes that come into self-development books and relate that to gaming. His ideas really embody the philosophy of life game design, which is why I wanted to react to it today. <laughs> So let's get into it. Have you ever gotten completely lost in a video game and wondered, why can't I have this sort of focus and dedication in my actual life? That's because in life, you don't understand the game you are playing. And not only that, life is a game that you not only play, but it's one that you have to design. Think about how much time game developers spend making sure the game is fulfilling for the player, and then in comparison, think about how much time you spend making sure that your own life is fulfilling. In this video, I'm going to lay out in painfully simple terms exactly what the game of life entails, how it is played, and why you have failed to advance as far as you would like. And of course, I will give you the cheat codes so that you can warp further ahead. Let's get into it. Now, video games are something known as finite games. They have a strict set of conditions that once met, the game is over. You beat the dragon and save the princess and you win. You beat up the bad guy and save the world and you win. You fucking destroy whatever that thing is. I guess you win. But so he's talking about the infinite game here. I'll let him cook, but I just wanted to say that most of the videos that you see online about treating life as a game have the tagline like, oh, this is how you win the game of life. And that's not the point. As gamers, we realize that we don't want to win games. We want to keep playing them. So keep that in mind as we watch this part. Life is what's called an infinite game, and the goal of an infinite game is to keep playing as long as possible. This has a series of counterintuitive consequences that mean you have to approach the game differently. You don't necessarily always want to beat the bad guy and save the princess because that would mean you no longer have some goal by which to improve yourself. That is, it's no longer clear and obvious how to continue the game. I'm fine, okay? We're fine, aren't we? Ah, we're well, good here, mate. So this is what's called an existential crisis, and don't worry, we'll come back to it. Most video games are designed so that there are a series of levels and each time you advance from one level to the next, you gain a special skill or ability or knowledge that will help you improve and conquer the next levels. So in video games, victories will make your character stronger and defeat will cause you to remain the same. But in the game of life, it is your failures that make your character stronger and successes that cause you to stay the same. There if you've ever played Elden Ring, you know exactly what he's on about or any of the Soul series games. Therefore, paradoxically, the point of the game of life is not necessarily to win at everything you do, but rather to continuously build your character through failures and setbacks in as many useful ways as possible. But don't worry, as long as you are active and engaged with the world, <laughs> this is not difficult. As an infinite game, life has an infinite number of ways to kick you in the balls and make you feel like a failure. The question is how you choose to handle those failures once they come. Because handling failures in life is completely different than video games as well. In a video game, if you fuck up a mission, you get to retry that mission a thousand times until you get it right. But in life, if you fuck up a relationship, the only way to get it right is to get it right in the next relationship. Video games give you the quests and you get to design the character. But in real life, you are given the character and you have to design the quests. Again, video games have clear conditions which you have to meet to win. Most games lay these conditions out in excruciating detail, going as far as walking you through every tiny thing you need to do to be a winner. The fun then, what he just said was so important, but unfortunately he overlooked it in the following part. Now he says that the fun is in designing your character, but what lacks in life is literally designing your own quests. Now think about the last thing you had to learn that wasn't a part of an education system. You kind of just brute forced your way through learning that thing. You didn't have a system around how to learn it, which is what happens in games. There's a really interesting goal of game designers, and that's to get you to learn. Because what they found out is that learning is the best way to engage players. That means they play longer, and it means they enjoy the game more, they give it good reviews, and then recommend it to other people. So game designers, after all this time, have really been incentivized to help gamers learn new skills within the game. And the way that they do that is by breaking concepts down in really small parts. And the fact that most good games are based around learning all these different things, that means you can reverse engineer how you play a game to 
to learn how to learn. There is literally a gold mine of learning and productivity techniques that are used in game design that you can apply to your own life. But you have to be mindful because just copy and pasting these things into your life is where people get wrong with the whole idea of this gamification thing, which basically turns your life into this cringe thing where you're just trying to have fun all the time and you don't actually do difficult things. That is not what I'm trying to get here with life game design. What I'm saying is that life is the hardest game that we will ever play. So what we want to do is use game design to help us figure out how to make life more engaging in itself. Is in designing or adapting or choosing your character to accomplish these quests. Do you want to be a lawless barbarian or do you want to be a noble sorcerer? Do you want to just break a bunch of shit? In the game of life, there are infinite quests, yet you are limited in your abilities and knowledge. Therefore, the goal is to find and choose the best quest to suit your character, to allow you to play the game as long and meaningfully as possible. And this brings up... So this is really interesting because usually, as he says, you get given a character or you're able to build a character in a game and you know exactly the stats that you have. But in the game of life, you literally don't know the stats that you have. And part of the game of life is literally figuring out what you're attuned to, what you have affinities towards, and what your weaknesses are. And once you discover those for yourself, you'll be able to select more meaningful quests in the game of life that will help you further along because you know what your skills are. And if you're a fan of RPGs like Fallout or Skyrim, you know that there are multiple ways that you can get a quest done depending on your playstyle. And that really relates to the game of life because there's so many different ways that we can find success, happiness, and have more productivity. And you have millions of people telling you millions of different ways to do this. So one of our first goals in life, which our parents help us do, is figure out who we are, what our affinities are, and how to make them better. This to our first cheat code. In video games, you generally want to rack up as many side quests as possible to level up your character and get sick loot. But in the game of life, side quests are a fun distraction at best and waste years of your life at worst. In this day and age, it is incredibly easy to get sidetracked onto a bunch of useless side quests and vanity tasks that have no actual impact on the quality of your life. A huge hack to winning the game of life then is to simply be more focused and obsessed about your main quest than other people. So the fewer side quests, the better. In video games, side quests tend to be kind of lame and little more than glorified errands. But in real life, the side quests are generally sexy, exciting, and seductive. Now, this is going to be incredibly difficult to forego, but the more you can give up the dumb side quests, the more you will stay on track with your main quest, leading to a happier and more fulfilling life. It's not so this is really interesting, and this is the reason why life is the hardest game we'll ever play. There's also an opposite to this advice that is actually true. How you do anything is how you do everything. And I have no doubt that Mark Manson himself has quoted this advice. The first career that I ever had was as a professional chef. And if I look back on those five years, I would feel like that was a side quest. But at the same time, I treated it as my main quest in life. But if I didn't, and I did treat it as a side quest, I wouldn't have learned nearly as much as I did, and I wouldn't be able to apply everything I learned to what I do now. See, there's one key philosophy that I learned from being a chef, and that's the philosophy of mise en place. It means literally everything in its place, and it's the crux of how all good chefs work. It's a philosophy in which you prepare and try to optimize for everything that you do in the kitchen, and this applies to life as well. And you can see it in so many different professions, and especially you can see it in the profession of being a game designer. It only takes one bug in a game to break your immersion of that game and break the flow of your gameplay. So it's up to the designer to make the flow as good as possible, and in your own life that's the same. If you're not prepared for the bugs or the setbacks that are going to happen in your life, you're not going to be able to continue the flow of being able to live it in a fulfilling way. All right, let's let the man cook. Not easy, it's not fun, but you know, that's the whole thing about being the hero. So you have to give up stuff. In video games, you know who your character is from the first moment you start the game. You know how well you can run, jump, pick up things, or shoot a gun. In some cases, you even get to pick who your character is and all the traits that they have. You can be like a badass night elf with gigantic... Well... Anyway, the game of life is weird because for the first few decades, you don't actually know who your character is. You don't know what you're good at. You don't know what your talents are. You don't know what you're going to enjoy pursuing or how you're going to respond to adversity. Therefore, the first goal of every new character in life is to simply gain self-knowledge. Figure out who the fuck you are and what you seem to be inclined to do. This means lots of experimenting. Go out and try some simple quest lines and see how far you can get. Join the debate club. Oh, wait, you hate speaking in front of people? Have social anxiety? All right, maybe do do like the math Olympiad or something. Oh wait, you're terrible at math? Okay, well, maybe try solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. You suck at that too? Okay, well, like maybe become this kid. Boom, now you're a hero. 
I learned at a young age that I was terrible at sports, but I also learned that I was highly creative. Now I got pushed into a lot of lockers and had my sexuality questioned by mouth breathers with the IQ of a T-Rex, but today that adversity has merely helped me. I'm able to create things, put them out into the world and not give a fuck if morons don't like them. The process of getting to know your character over time will continue throughout your life, but the bulk of that realization should happen while you're still young. I think this video is amazing so far, but the saddest thing about it is that this valuable information is going to fly into the ears of the people that listen to it and go straight out the other because the knowledge you gain throughout life is only as valuable as the systems that you use to implement it. Now think about what we just learned about self-knowledge of your character. How do you know who you are, apart from the memory that you have on your Facebook page, apart from your Instagram page or whatever. How do you know what you're good at, what you're weak at, what achievements you made throughout your life? And do you use that as a consistent practice to help track your day to day? You probably don't. And so while Mark is giving us really valuable advice that is validated, if we don't have a system to actually implement it, it's pretty much useless listening to this. And that's exactly the reason why I decided to make a self-improvement app called Life Game Design before I heavily started more content creation. Because I think the biggest problem with self-improvement at the moment is that YouTubers are incentivized to make you binge watch their content instead of taking action. And the thing is, you'll get the feeling like you're learning and improving through watching all these things and even taking these really good validated ideas from you know best-selling authors like Mark Manson himself but if you don't take action to implement this advice you're not going to do anything with it and it's useless for you to watch this. So if you want access to a system that helps you action all of this amazing advice, you can download Life Game Design because it's currently free. Mark's next cheat code is an ad for BetterHelp, which is a therapy service, which I'm not gonna say is a bad thing, but we're just gonna skip over this for the sake of the reaction. Choosing the right quest is arguably the biggest and most difficult component of winning the game of life. Strong quests reveal character and build skills. A quest to live abroad for a year is great because it will teach you many things about yourself and you can develop communication skills, relationship skills, self-confidence, independence, all that good shit. Bad quests though, obscure your character and waste skills. An example of a bad quest is like drinking all 268 beers on tap at the logger house near your old university. It blinds you to your own character and wastes precious time energy, and mana. Another bad quest is only trying to own a fancy car. Not only does this quest not build many skills, but it's likely motivated by hiding who you are from the world, not revealing it. And actually, this is kind of the biggest mistake that people make when choosing quests. They mistake someone else's quest line for their own. You owning a Lamborghini is likely not your own quest line. It's the quest line of the marketers working at Lamborghini or some douchey YouTuber who wants you to envy their quest line. Many times in life, people will try to impose their quest lines on you in hopes that you will complete it for them. This could be your parents wanting you to go to a certain type of school or a partner who wants you to fix their emotional problems or a company who's just marketing their useless shit to you. Do not be seduced by other people's quest lines. It's easy to give in and try to chase other people's dreams because it relieves you of the responsibility of choosing your own. So how are you going to make sure that you're onto your own quest line? Do you have a vision board on the wall of all the things that you want to achieve in life? Do you have a plan of what your life design is going to be currently? Do you have a focus intention of taking all the different areas of life that you currently have and honing them onto maybe three specific ones that you're going to lock in on? And do you have a way to reflect on all of those things? Yeah, you probably don't. Go download Life Game Design, dude. <laughs> Boundaries sound like a wishy-washy term that your Aunt Margaret says before giving you a tarot card reading, but Boundaries are actually an incredibly practical and important relationship tool that I would argue everybody should know and learn. Now, the core of Boundaries is simple. You cannot complete other people's quests for them, and no one else can complete your quest for you. And if people try to complete yours, or if they ask you to complete theirs, it's your responsibility to tell them to fuck off. No. You should learn the meaning of the word. If you don't tell them no, not only will you waste your precious time and energy, but you will prevent them from advancing in their own quests, thus wasting theirs as well. I actually had a friend in high school who was going towards the wrong path in life and we were really close friends around the start of high school and then he started hanging around really bad influences and I felt like it was my job to tell him to stop and it's kind of embarrassing because I almost became like a mother to him. I would like tell him what's right and wrong and all this stuff and he resented me more and more because of it and I kind of used that as an excuse to shy away from my own problems in life and just focus on trying to help his and then I finally realized that there's nothing I can really say to help him change. It's like the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. James, I have no idea what you're up to now, but I hope you're doing well. 
Now, here's a harsh truth. Once selected, your ability to advance in your quest will come down to three things. Your character traits, your ability to focus, and your ability to stomach failure and setback. Your character traits are a given. It's your job to discover them and then leverage them. We've already talked about that. Your focus is based on your ability to turn down useless but exciting side quests and enforce boundaries. The progress is really going to be proportional to your ability to stomach failure. Unlike video games, in the game of life, setbacks and failures are what make your character stronger. Put another way, grinding levels in a video game means winning tons of easy battles over and over to gain experience. Unless you're playing Elden Ring. <clears throat> but grinding levels in real life means losing hard battles to gain experience. That's why... Most people hate failure because they feel judged or embarrassed in front of others. If you feel this way, it's probably because you do not understand your character enough or you're living too much on other people's quest lines, not your own. As a result, most people develop an aversion to failure. They would rather spend their lives whittling time away on small, meaningless quests that prop up the delusions of their character rather than risk failure at a big, meaningful quest. But if you can learn to enjoy failure, if you can learn to enjoy the feeling of trying something, having it not work, and then learning what to do instead, you will become un unstoppable. You will progress further and faster than anyone else, and you will truly accomplish great feats like a true level 99 hero. This is where the power lies. All right, get ready. There's a final boss in a classic video game named Mike Tyson, who once said, not everyone who hurts you is an enemy, and not everyone who helps you is a friend. It's important to realize that while on your quest, there will be many people who naturally align with your quest, and many who do not. This is inevitable. The challenge in the game of life is less about avoiding enemies than simply recognizing who and what they are. Enemies are people who would try to divert you from completing your quests. Some enemies do this because their quests and yours contradict one another. But most enemies do it simply because they envy the progress that you've made or that you could potentially make. They falsely believe that you progressing in your quest somehow diminishes the progress that they've made in theirs. I've seen this quote pop up in so many comment sections of young guys who are trying to improve and they get shat on. And this quote from Alex Hormozzi wraps up the whole idea. No one who is doing more than you will put you down. So every time you get a comment of hate from someone who says that you're wasting your time or whatever, it's probably because they're doing less than you. But if any of you fellas are in the comment section and want to give me some hate, please bless the algorithm, please. Oh this is the envy trap. When we see others advancing far in their quest lines, it sometimes makes us feel inadequate in our own. But this actually makes no sense. We are different characters. We usually have no idea the sacrifices that other people have made in their quests. It's important to simply stay focused on your own. You don't know what people gave up for their successes. Therefore, it's impossible to truly envy what they have. Put another way, you cannot envy the benefits of someone's life without also envying the costs. And finally, there will be people who will naturally align their quests with yours. These are special people, and you should take great care of them when you come across them. Not only because they will aid you on your quest, but because all of the cliches are true. Victory is really only worth experiencing when it's shared. It's counterintuitive, but helping other people with their quests will make it easier to advance in yours. This is because you will build alliances and goodwill towards your goals. People will share information, knowledge, and skills with you. They will help protect you from diversions and lame side quests, and they will have your best interests in heart. And other times, they'll just love you. Basically, the more you try to help other people win, the more they'll try to help you win. This is the opposite of the envy trap. Let's call it the charity cheat code. Nothing gets you further ahead than giving away progress to others. This is a weird loophole in the game of life. The grand illusion that we all seem to fall for time and time again, that we mistakenly believe that we must be the hero and the world should be our sidekick. When actually the opposite is true. There is no hero and we're all each other's sidekicks. Thanks for being my sidekick. I could actually use some fucking help. One thing I want to talk about adjacent to the idea that everyone's your sidekick is that you need to kind of check in on your mates. And there's this whole buzz of like checking on your mates and like a mental health thing. But really, what time do you go to your friends when you're having a really huge problem, especially if they're friends that you usually don't tell the everyday things to? In my self-development group made of three friends, including myself, we used to never tell each other the big problems that we were dealing with because we weren't used to telling us each other our small problems and also our small wins. So what we did instead is that we shared our highlight of the day to each other every single day. And from there, some of our highlights were big and some of our highlights were small, but it helped us understand how to talk about how our days were going in a more frequent way. And so when big things did come up and it was really obvious because we were sharing our progress from day to day, 
it was so much easier to talk about instead of like, you know, bottling it in. And then we were literally just able to help each other straight away with those things instead of having this like weird anxiety about whether you should reach out to someone for help and all those kind of things. And a lot of the time, these things would happen out of nowhere. So that's the importance of having a close circle of friends where you're all growing together. You want to be able to share with them the big wins and the small wins and also the big losses and the small ones too. No, 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 fuck! God, I fucking dodged. I fucking dodged. That's bullshit. Ow. I think it's funny and I really appreciate all the nuance Mark has to offer, but I kind of feel like he's not really a gamer. I don't know. It's just kind of the feeling that I got. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this. And if there's one thing I'd really like you to take away from this, it's that one, life is a game that you don't only play, it's also one that you design. And two, the information that you get from any source is only as valuable as the systems that you use to implement it. If you want to learn more about the philosophy of life game design, you can click here. And if you want to see the full tour of life game design, which is currently free, you can watch the video up there.